सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली आई टेक डीप कामिंग ब्रेथ एज आई स्टार्ट दिस एपिसोड बिकॉज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट चाइनीज पॉलिटिक्स एंड यू नो वॉट नथिंग इज मोर क्लटर्ड then the language used in chinese politics chinese politics itself particularly at this point of time is not that complicated it's not that cluttered because you know that xi jinping is going to be the ruler of china for as long as he wishes for life it seems right now if he wants to but it's the language the rhetoric and it's all very nuanced and you have to read it and try and understand what this is leading to and where this is coming from so that is the challenge trying to understand china which is something that i've only started doing lately i was too sort of pakistan focused when it came to thinking about india's strategic strategic interests but lately china has become so important and i'm reading up and also because of cut the clutter i have to read up a lot more and try and understand now what's happened in china is <coughs> this week the central committee of the chinese communist party has passed a resolution it had its plenum this was the sixth plenum for four days sixth plenum of the 19th central committee of the chinese communist party so they passed a resolution somehow uh, long windedly worded i had warned you already that that everything all rhetoric has a lot of lot of jargon and every everything is said in and a lot of words and you have to read not just between the lines but also between the words also with the hazard that these have been translated from chinese language into english albeit by very good people some of what i am referring to has been translated and has been written about by adil bra a young china scholar and specialist who writes not one but two weekly columns for us on china because china is such a clear and present issue for india so please follow those columns i on china and china scope now <coughs> this resolution of the ccp uh, central committee of ccp chinese communist party it's called resolution of the central committee of the chinese communist party on the major major, major achievements and historical experiences of the party's 100 year struggle chinese communist party is now heading for its 100th anniversary or centenary year next year because it was founded in 1921 so this document this resolution is almost like a historic document so if you read the history of chinese communist party in its history so far only two sort of documents or resolution on history have been passed one was in 1945 and i'll tell you a bit more about it as we go along and one was in 1981 1945 was to legitimize mao's leadership of the entire party to get rid of all the dissidents all his critics and to say that mao is the supreme leader right and also looking at some historic mistakes of the past uh, that obviously mao's adversaries or mao's critics in the party had made uh, similarly in <clears throat> 1981 the again resolution on history the second one passed under deng xiaoping that looked at the errors made in mao's times and i will tell you more about those as we go ahead in mao's times essentially the cultural revolution that began in 1966 so all of us have read about cultural revolution about the gang of four etc 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 and how mao's era then ended and deng came back in from cold storage or deep freeze and became a leader who revolutionized china in fact the resolution to reform china's economy uh, and go towards free markets was taken also in a 1978 plenum of the central committee so the plenum of the central committee is a very important thing now if this is this third re- resolution what does it mean first of all the communique that's been issued on the resolution already has given us something comparable to mao zedong there is no doubt left that xi jinping has now been raised to the level of mao zedong and deng shopping if not maybe above deng shopping and close to mao zedong because just as there was mao zedong thought now there is xi jinping thought so xi jinping thought is a convenient short speak if i may use that word short speak for 
the typically long-winded Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, right? Mouthful, isn't it? So next year, this resolution will be put forward at the, at the 20th National Congress of the Chinese Communist Party. That takes place once in five years. And that will take a call on this. And you know what that call will be because even before this resolution was put up at the plenary, the Politburo had met on 18th of October and they had looked at all the documentation, etc., etc., leading up to this resolution. And they had submitted all of that to the Central Committee saying, Central Committee will now look at it or review it. I think in Chinese, if I read Adil Bra correctly, this process is called Shen Yi, like a review, like a second look, but that's just a formality. Uh, you can imagine nobody in the Central Committee was going to say, I have doubt over this. Now, Central Committee itself, the plenary has 200 delegates the, who are voting delegates, voting members, and 175 alternate members who speak but who do not vote. So it is these people who got together and who have passed this resolution. Now, if you see the communique and read some passages from it, and I'll read them for you. They are a bit laborious, so I'm warning you. But these are very important. And I will try and read them slowly and not like one of those uh, maglev trains that sort of fly through China these days, right? So this goes, Comrade Xi Jinping, through meticulous assessment, which is translated also as scientific judgment. Comrade Xi Jinping, through meticulous assessment or scientific judgment and deep reflection on a number of major theoretical, Chinese Communist Party still talks about theoretical issues. Theoretical and practical questions regarding the cause of the party and the country in a new era. Everything has the new era there. So, you know, it's like saying <clears throat> what it means is or what it implies is, again, between the lines and between the words is that the two leaders before him who ruled for about 20 years, that is Hu Jintao and also Jiang Jemin, they were like commas on way to the final period which Xi Jinping is going to lead. China too. So he's reviewed these practical questions, theoretical questions regarding the cause of the party and the country in a new era. And he has set forth a series of original new ideas, thoughts and strategies on national governance revolving around the major questions of our times. What are these questions? Then this goes on to say, communicate. What kind of socialism with Chinese characteristics we should uphold and develop in this new era? New era, forget Hu Jintao, forget Jiang Jemin. What kind of socialism with Chinese characteristics we should uphold and, de and develop in this new era? Two, what kind of modern country we should build? And three, what kind of Marxist party exercising long-term governance we should develop? There is, no, there is no question about who will exercise long-term governance. It will be the Communist Party. So what kind of Marxist party exercising long-term governance we should develop? And finally, as well as how we go about achieving these tasks. And then it goes into praising Xi Jinping again to even higher heavens. And it says, he is thus, he is thus the principal founder of Xi Jinping thought. I said, a Mao Zedong thought, a Xi Jinping thought. He is thus the principal founder of the Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for new era. Once again, new era. This is the Marxism of contemporary China and of the 21st century. This communique goes on to say, this view or this communique reflects the common will of the party. See the order. It's very, it's very important. This reflects, this communique praising Xi Jinping reflects the will of the party. So the most important is the party, armed forces. Second most important is the armed forces. We had told you the other day that in China, armed forces don't belong to the state. They belong to the party, which owns the state instead, right? So common will of the party, armed forces, Chinese people of all ethnicities. So Chinese people come third and Somebody has been careful to say all ethnicities, just in case any Uyghurs or Tibetans and others chose to have any doubts. Nobody would dare to mention it, even if they had any doubts. But this has been made sure that this has been included. And this will lead China's drive towards, in, again, a new era. 
So new era has been used about, about seven times in three paras, right? This will, yield, this will lead to China's drive towards new era of historic process of national rejuvenation. Now, if this is the third resolution on history by Chinese Communist Party in almost a hundred years, I told you 1945 first, 81, and now the third one coming up. What is the big difference between the earlier two and this one? The earlier two but resolutions on history looking at some errors made by the party or some people in the party. The 1945 resolution, for example, talked about some aberrations had come into the party or some historical issues and problems. This was coming just after the second Sino-Japanese war and also after what was called the Yanan rectification, when a lot of people were purged from the party. Mao had purged all his detractors from the party, 1941 onwards. It is quite violent quite brutal. So, and this was to review what went wrong. So, that is the history the 45 resolution looked at. The second resolution of 1981 looked essentially also at the errors made during the Cultural Revolution. And the 1981 resolution focused on certain questions in the history of our party since the, since the founding of the PRC. So, 1949 uh, and then 28 years of their government. 1949 to uh, 1981, 32 years of liberation, uh, and it said there have been left errors over the past 28 years, that is Mao's rule. So what are these left errors and who's responsible? In that resolution they said, and I'm quoting from it, quote, chief responsibility of the grave left errors of cultural revolution and error comprehensive in magnitude and protracted in duration does indeed lie with comrade Mao Zedong. And then what does it go on to say? Because you, know, you also can't condemn Mao completely. So Mao was not going to be written off from Chinese history. It goes on to say, quote, but after all, it was the error of a great proletarian revolutionary. Right? What's a blunder like cultural revolution between friends? Now, political history, history is important everywhere. But it's even more important for dictatorships. Why? Because dictators use history as a way of controlling popular opinion. So they have all, through history, dictators have weaponized history. That's what Mao did and that's what it seems Xi Jinping is doing now. Because it is through rewriting of history that you promote a personality cult. And you then sort of engrave it in the stone and the rocks so nobody can come and erase it. And that is what he's trying to do. So Mao, for example, in Chinese history, he's immortalized as somebody who liberated the country, who brought in the revolution, who created the new republic. Deng Xiaoping, on the other hand, is immortalized as the man who led it to its economic takeoff. We, I, we, I do remember a conversation one, uh, once, Lee Kuan Yew was on a visit to Delhi and he had, he had a meeting, closed door meeting with a bunch of editors, closed door in the sense it was off the record. And he said, see how the Chinese are going, because he was supposed to be very knowledgeable on China. And he said, see, he said, see, Mao said, China will rise. Jiang Zemin said, nobody can stop the rise of China. Hu Jintao now said, China has risen with his fist up like this. So see what the guy coming next would say. So the guy coming next now, Xi Jinping is saying, okay, China was to rise, China has risen. All those who tried to stop China's rise, rise, we have defeated them. Now that's done, what does China do with this rise? China has this power. So he's asserting the Chinese power and that is the difference he's making right now. And this resolution also gives him the credit for many victories on the economy, foreign policy, pollution, COVID, everything, and including things like uh, the deal that he has done with the Canadians and the Americans getting Meng Wangchu uh, freed from there in return for the two Canadians that he, he, he had taken prisoner and many other things. Now, Xi Jinping is beginning to reflect that in his messages to the world also. We saw a video recorded message from him at the APEC forum, that is Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum. And there in that video recorded message, he said, Asian nations should resist forming small circles on geopolitical grounds. You know what he's referring to. It's the Quad, etc. Plus also the fact that Joe Biden and also uh, Boris Johnson have been talking about this 
this sort of group of democracies to counter counter the ideological and philosophical rise of china all they don't quite put it in that many words i am doing that then he went on to say that we have to do everything possible that the antagonism and division of cold war era does not come back in asia so having said that there is a very fascinating account in a new york times story and i am reading it in many places but i particularly mark out this story and i'll share it with you on why it's so important for him to control the history because his main weapon right now is chinese nationalism he said we have become a super power we have declared victory we can walk all over anybody we wish to right how did we get here we got here because we were so great our forefathers our ideological forefathers were so great so see what's happened in china this year in china this year the biggest film hit in fact i'd put it away uh, to read at some point and also to watch the film with english subtitles maybe to talk about it one of these days or get my colleagues to uh, see it and talk about it one of these days it's a film called battle of lake changjin Now, Battle of Lake Changjin is a famous battle which went on for a long time. Chinese and the Americans in the Korean War. Everybody suffered a lot of casualties. Ultimately, the Chinese believe that they prevailed. It's a three-hour movie. It's been the biggest hit and the biggest grosser. Obviously, it's also been promoted by the party and its propaganda machinery. But this has this film has led to. a new charge of nationalism militarism all over the chinese population this message this kind of jingoistic messaging is going on everywhere xi jinping for example has started massive red tourism projects that means tens of crores of chinese now are going back say to mao's hometown and other places which are linked to the revolution and rise of communist party so this is red tourism that is promoting again as part of his indoctrination or reindoctrination now there is an ice cream brand called era of awakening very popular ice cream brand anything that the state supports will become popular even on the wrappers of that ice cream these revolutionary slogans are being written so for example there is a line i am a brick of the revolution and i will be put wherever i am nailed right who said this this was said by a character in one of the patriotic chinese tele serials right i don't know whether so somebody in real life said this or not <clears throat> i am a brick of the revolution and i will be put wherever i am needed this was found according to this nyt story on a chocolate ice cream wrapper right so this is being spread at that level there are lots of patriotic dramas on tv movies etc 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 now history for these dictatorships as i said earlier is not just for political legitimacy but it is for total control it is a weapon for total control that's what we mean by weaponizing of history so xi jinping had already passed a law which criminalized what was called what was called the slandering of heroes and martyrs of china this also included action against those who raised questions about chinese ca- casualties in galwan those who said more than four people died or china is hiding the facts they were locked up under this law and this law has up to 3 years of jail now following that all dictators love it even the russians even putin did this he also passed a law saying that anybody saying anything critical or anybody quote and quote slandering the heroes of the great patriotic war that is the second world war will also be similarly criminally punished now there is a quote there is a couple of quotes from an author and a scholar at woodrow wilson international center for scholars in washington whose book is coming out now and, I, and i'm looking forward to it the book is called dancing on bones history and power in china russia and north korea and she also explains this this obsession with controlling history in case of she it is also personal because she is not a nobody he did not come from nowhere she's father was a ranking communist party leader under mao and one of mao's most loyal and trusted comrades his name was shi jongshun shi jongshun i i'm not sure i pronounce the name right but you will see the spelling on my screen shi jongshun he was mao's comrade in fact when mao was on the run and it looked like the nationalist forces that is forces of what is today taiwan will get the better of him or will corner him corner him he had created a safe enclave 
where Mao and others, the key people, would be protected. And he waged a heroic battle. Now, Xi Jinping has seen, he grew up under his father's shadow. Xi Jinping watched his father's fate closely. He saw his father being, risen, uh, being raised to great heroism and high position and then suddenly brought down his abrupt fall and then his persecution. Because Mao Zedong at some point, all dictators live in great insecurity, right? If anybody says this dictator sleeps, sleeps very well, no dictator sleeps well. They all have problems because they start fearing their own shadow. So Mao got suspicious that Xi's father, Xi, Xi Zhongchun, he was encouraging the publish, publishing of a historical novel which was going to take side swipes at Mao's policies and Mao's style of governance. He got so furious, he had him arrested. He was arrested for many years. 1966, when the Cultural Revolution began, Xi's father was paraded by Red Guards, humiliated in public, paraded, interrogated brutally, and jailed for several, several, several years. Young Xi was among the many young, uh, many young teenagers and others of that generation belonging to good families or powerful families who were then sent away to the countryside to work in rural China. So he went to rural China. Many of those young people got disillusioned with China in the course of time, emigrated. But Xi Jinping did not get disillusioned. He wanted to come back to Chinese Communist Party. As he became a kind of a uh, rural chief, a rural head, he continued to apply for a return to the party. On his 10th application, he was admitted to the party and the rest, as we know, is history. Now, there are a couple of passages from his writings that you find in this article. One, he says, he wrote to his father in 2001. In 2001, he wrote to his father, quote, Back in those times when people yelled that we were sons of bitches, I remained convinced that my father is a hero. Right? That's what he wrote. And then, according to Xi Zhongshun's official biography, it is stated, again, quote, you are a son of the peasants, a comrade in arms who loves the Chinese people and who loves the revolution. So you then see where Xi Jinping is coming from, because in all of this, in all of this, there is always something personal. And that is the personal. And this is where personal lives, national histories, ideological histories, ideologies, nations and their fates get intertwined.